Hey, what's going on? Sorry, that's probably pretty loud. Oh, is my camera gonna work? Oh, maybe not. Maybe? Maybe not? You can do it. Oh. Oh my gosh, what is going on? Give me one second. I, there we go. Weird. So I just did like the craziest probably thing you can do before you go live, which is update your NVIDIA drivers, update your stream deck, and then I think there was an update for Spotify and I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> So man, must be must be something with Stream Deck in OBS. For some reason it didn't switch to the correct scene. How's it going? Man, I feel I feel so short. Like the last stream I was standing up and it uh, actually it, it worked out a little bit better. So here in a little bit I might stand up. Man, how's everybody doing? What are you guys working on? Happy Tuesday. It is Prime Day today too. Uh, and I was pleasantly surprised at some of the things, but we, we can get into that. It, well, I mean, well, yeah, let me know. If you if you pick something up on Prime Day, let me know. I'll get to it here in a second. Um, let me see here. Let's see. Got to do some more adjusting. Totally getting, I think I'm getting used to standing up and streaming. I might do it here in a minute. I just feel so short sitting down now in front of here after standing. Um, Penguin Airlines. Yes, you were first. So he was definitely first. You guys probably didn't see that message, but he definitely was. Hey, God, 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 I don't even say that. How do this? Hey, thanks for the fall. Appreciate it. Welcome. Um, but yes, for the record, Par Penguin Airlines was first. Uh, he just got off work. That's what he said. So, man, how's everybody doing? Um, Takano, hey yo, how's it going? Bre Bread Puncher, that looks like a newer name. Pog, yeah, man. Penguin Airlines, LL. I have a media-only browser that sits in a dedicated spot on my desktop and suddenly see Tim moving around. <laughs> that was probably kind of creepy, wasn't it? <laughs> um, Home Lab New, hey, how's it going? PC Geek. Okay, this is scary. Yeah, this this was going into that one song. Yeah, if you if you tuned in right to the beginning of that one song, it did sound like kind of a kind of a creepy like horror music kind of kind of song. I, I don't know. Uh, I I didn't realize that until you said it. I was just like, oh yeah, it does. If you didn't hear the rest of the song, you would totally totally think it was like like I was watching Halloween or something. Um, Bread Puncher just. Just copped a PCIe network interface card after watching your PFSense video. Nice. Yeah, what would you get? Uh, yeah, what'd you go with? You get uh, dual gigabit NIC. You go, yeah, Intel or Broadcom. I think PC Geek was wondering the same thing. Yeah, curious about that. Um, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, I hope it works too. Should work. Should work. Totally should. Um, as long as it's, you know, uh, a decent, uh, you know, reputable uh, chip on there. Should be totally fine. Um, PC Geek, uh, watching tech videos and streams are why must love us. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, yeah. And on top of that, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I do a lot of tech all day long. So yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, <laughs> Penguin Airlines, wife in one ear, stream in the other. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I was saying that's, that's kind of me all the time. Like what? I just have one headphone sometimes, you know, in and one out and, <laughs> Uh, Takano, still the light show. All right, yeah, got the rest of the gang boxes. I also needed four more outlets, um, but they were $1 each if you bought singles, and a 10-pack was $5. Rather go with the 10-pack. Heck yeah, heck yeah, and then you have backups, man. So yeah, it's basically uh, buy five, get five free at that price, or half price. Uh, that's awesome, yeah, for sure. Um, Home Lab New, currently writing a report. Okay, trying to figure out how to get RDS... Aurora serverless interacts with IAM. Like, like, can you restrict, say, a Lambda functions access with a table in Aurora serverless with IAM? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I kind of, at a high level, understand what you're trying to do. You know, I, I understand, you know, high level Lambda, it's, you know, AWS's uh, serverless functions. I understand IAM identity and access management. But you're asking, can you restrict a Lambda's function access to a table in serverless with IAM? Yeah, I don't know. That's a great question for anyone who does uh, a lot of Lambda stuff or even AWS uh, IAM stuff. Um, uh, it's not super loud. Okay, good, good. Let me know if my audio gets too loud. I'm sure you guys, like, as soon as I come in, you're like, turn it down. It's He's yelling again. Hey, Rumble Tum Jum. Hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Um... 
Let's see here. Bread Puncher. Ahoy. A bold move. Yes. Penguin Airlines. About to go live. <laughs> Choco upgrade. All oh, dash Y. Yeah, it should be dash YOLO is what it should be. That's kind of what I felt like this right before I went live. Uh, I, I did it one time before and it went okay. It was like NVIDIA driver and OBS at the same time. Like, yeah, why not? Why wouldn't I do that? Because <laughs> everything was working right before and I expect everything to work right after. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta figure out what's... I, I think it's a Stream Deck thing. I think it's a Stream Deck. Because that was the only thing I really... Well, I mean, between OBS and Stream Deck, that was the only thing it said it was going to uh, uh, update. Uh, I mean, my graphics driver. But I mean, what am I trying to say? Stream Deck uh, has a plugin for OBS. And so maybe maybe something didn't go right. I don't know. After I hit the button like three times, it finally went. Um, Super bold. Yeah, yeah. PC Geek, how's it going? Um, Penguin Airlines, I just glanced at it and I'm surprised myself. I, I, an item I've been waiting for to purchase for a long time just hit a 30% discount. Yeah, awesome. I, um, you know, I, I was kind of surprised uh, this year more than other years. The other years are, or, or either that or, or they focus more on tech. But I feel like other years it was just like a whole bunch of random stuff. And it, it still kind of is random stuff. Like if you just go to their discounts page, and you're like, yeah, show me all your discounts. You're like, what are these things? Like, I, I, I'm seeing these hollow mice and all of these like weird tech products. And I'm like, oh, that looks cool. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of the things I, I, I was looking at weren't things that were, I was going to buy. I, th I felt like it was like, I felt like I was like on TikTok or something, just scrolling, wasting time, like looking at all these products, knowing I'm not going to buy one, but I'm just going to keep scrolling because they're all interesting to look at. Uh, but definitely good to get ideas, but I did see some decent deals. Like I saw, well, the one I, I'm still debating on pulling the trigger is the Ryzen 2600, I think. It's like 149 They sold out this morning um, of the one with this specific cooler, but then they have another one without, uh, with a different cooler. It's like 140 I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so cheap for a Ryzen 5 2600, 6 core, 12 thread. I was like, whoa, man. Anyways, uh, don't buy it because then it probably won't be there after the stream. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I, I've been, uh, I, I, I guess I've been a, a, a pleasantly surprised at some of the things. Um, and a whole bunch of random stuff too, like, uh, but random good things. Um, the funny thing is like, I preloaded my cart last night on Amazon. So I, I, I'm doing a couple of upgrades. And so I have like a couple of batches of things I need to purchase. So I put one last night and it was like, I don't know, this was like 11 o'clock at night. I'm like, should I buy it now or should I buy it tomorrow? I was like, you know, most likely a lot of this stuff isn't going to be on sale for Prime Day. And I was like, okay, I'll just buy it. Sure enough, I go into my previous order and I look at a couple things. They're like $10 cheaper. I was like, cancel, cancel, rebuy. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I have another batch of things I need to buy. I think today after the stream and we'll see. We'll see. I, um, yeah, a couple of, a couple of pretty big upgrades. Uh, I just, I, it's so tough. I just say this, it, it's so tough building like new systems, just like you don't want to mess up and you want to get it all in one order too. But yeah, anyways. Um, yeah. So Penguin Airlines, any, what, what was it, uh, that you wanted to purchase? If you, if you want to share, if not, that's totally cool too. Uh, to kind of, uh, thoughts on the iPhone 12 release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw it. Um, well, I watched the super condensed version, uh, and that means I watched the 12 minute version from The Verge, and I skipped through 90% of it, so I don't know how many seconds of that it is. <laughs> um, but, you know, a couple things, like, I, I don't think it was as big of a zump, an upgrade as iPhone usually does around this time. Um, does it look good? Yeah, sure, it looks good. Um, is it a decent price? I mean, it's the same price as the last one. Um, has LiDAR now. I thought that was kind of a joke at first, but no, it, they have LiDAR. Uh, so, you know, to help out with augmented reality. Thought that was interesting. Um, and then, you know, I, I was kind of like, okay, it's um, nothing really earth shattering, you know, or groundbreaking. Hey, Hemlock, thanks for the sub. Thanks for the prime sub. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Man, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the iPhone 12, like, I, you know, uh, I guess I wasn't totally blown away or totally surprised. I, I, I'm not sure if I should have been or not. Um, so, yeah, pretty okay. Um, you know, I, I'm in need of one, like now. Uh, well, not, you know, just a new phone in general. My, I have an iPhone 7 Plus, 
and it was doing totally fine until this last upgrade and now the battery drains like I can get to 20% by noon now, which stinks. <laughs> and uh, which which is pr pretty funny because I was just thinking the other day, like, you know, with everyone being home from COVID, I bet like phone sales in general, like the normal phone sales they would normally get, like all phone manufacturers are probably down, not just because people, you know, don't have the money to buy one, but because they're at home. They're not plugging their, you know, they're, they're, they're not wearing down their battery because they're right next to a charger. I know this isn't everyone, but a lot of people, they're at home, so they don't notice their battery dying as much. Um, they're not dropping their phone. They're not losing their phone. Their phone's not getting stolen because they're at home. So it's kind of, I wonder if phone manufacturers are, are, are kind of seeing that too. Just less phone sales in general. I don't know. Just speculating. Um, but the one, um, so the one thing I did think was interesting about uh, that, that phone launch was what? The HomePod mini? Looks, it's pretty cute. I think it's pretty cute. I think I can say that. Uh, I think the Home HomePod Mini, I thought for me, was a little more interesting than the iPhone 12. Like I kind of knew what to expect with the iPhone 12. Knew they weren't really going to go USB-C. You know, I uh, going to get upgraded internals and maybe add a little more tech, and that's kind of what it was. Um, but I will say the 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 HomePod Mini is is cute. I'm going to say that it's cute. Um, but it looks really cool. Um, I, so I've, I'm, I have Google home. I'm a huge fan of Google home. I have it. And I was thinking, huh, can I, could I make the switch? I don't know. We'll see. Um, but the interesting thing about the home pod mini is, is, and, and still is that, you know, Spotify isn't on, you know, home kit or Apple's, you know, Siri, whatever they call it, their voice assistant. You can't basically say play Spotify, which is, which is interesting. It's either either Apple. I mean, I mean, I know Apple and Spotify don't really get along, but um, who who knows who's holding out? It's probably Spotify holding out on Apple. <laughs> I don't know. They want something that Apple's probably not going to budge on, like most stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty interesting uh, to say the least. Um, I am I am interested in the HomePod a little bit. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of Siri. I mean, I use Google Voice Assistant on an iPhone, so it's kind of in this weird mixed world, you know, and like most people, I use tons of Google products, you know, Google Docs, Gmail. So that's super nice on a Google Home. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, if I don't know if maybe it'd work because there are some things that work a little nicer when you have an, 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 an iPhone, you know, with a HomePod or something like that. Um, there are some things that don't work at all, though, if I went there like my Nest, at least for now. Uh, so that, that kind of stinks. So I don't know. Uh, I thought it was interesting, um, you know, cool thing, couple cool things came out of it, but no huge surprises for me. Um, Shuckle Samurai, good evening all. Uh, Penguin Airlines, yep, 8 p.m. lunch, totally lost track of time, man, that stinks. That stinks, man. <laughs> Sounds like me on the weekends, I, I have like one meal a day and it's like at 7 o'clock and uh, it's just because I'm so busy with stuff, I, I'm never really hungry uh, until about then. Um, Penguin Airlines got my app deployed to dev finally though. Yes. Awesome, man. That's a good feeling. Uh, Bread Puncher, dual gigabit Intel, uh, EXPI 940, uh, 2PT. Nice. So dual gigabit. And so you're going to use this for dual gigabit and you're going to use it for PFSense. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I think this will go good. I think it will go fine. Uh, Jath Brisk, uh, dual 2660 V2s. Coming on Friday to finish my new server. Fun weekend project ahead. Yeah, that does sound awesome. Yeah, that sounds awesome. So, hey, Jath, what, what are you going to run on it? Uh, is that, I assume that's your virtualization server? Your hypervisor? Because, uh, man, with, with dual procs like that, I, I assume it would have to be. Unless you're just crunching some crazy stuff. Uh, but, yeah. Sorry, my, my, sorry, my, my puppy, he goes, he goes kind of crazy. He's going crazy right now. It was a combination of, I think, someone outside, <laughs> someone outside and the fire truck going by. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> every time I think he's done, he's just like, no, I'm going to do it some more. All right. It's weird. It's only like when I'm talking too. <laughs> uh, PC Geek, gotta love discounts. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I apologize for that. 
All right, I, I got to see one second. Sorry about that. Man, he, he never usually goes that crazy. Well, he he does not when I'm on stream, though, usually. Uh, so anyway, sorry about that. Uh, PC Geek, gotta love discounts. Heck yes. Uh, PC Geek, I set up Windows 7 VM on Proxmox and got all the... All right, I gotta get him. I'm sorry, one second. All right, sorry about that. He's actually in here right now. Come here, puppy. Want to come here? He's he's uh he's kind of wild. Well, actually, he's really wild. So that one of my dogs. Well, actually, they're both. We got the main society. One is just like so calm, so chill. The other one, not so much. And so he's in here now. I figured him in here is probably a little bit better than him out there. Here is the wild beast right here. He is he is so wild. He is so wild. Like he looks tiny, but man, he is such a handful. He bites me, he bites my wife, he attacks me, he attacks my other dog, he barks at everyone. And he looks so calm right now, but he is so crazy. But he's so good. <laughs> so yeah, that's him. He's uh he is such a handful. Anyway, sorry about all the interruptions. He's just, uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he, he needs extra attention. He has special needs. He, re he really does. I guess he, I don't know, long story short, my wife did a whole bunch of research about him because the Humane Society told us a few things about where he was. So my wife, like, went and researched him at this other Humane Society in Texas and found out all these things. And he's had a really rough life. And so, I don't know, we're trying to give him a good one now. But he is still, he's still really tense from his past life. Uh, but anyways, let's try this again. PC Geek, I set up Windows 7 on a VM on Proxmox and get all the drivers working in Spice for console, which is nice. Nice, man. I sell that stuff in Discord. I haven't done, like, the Spice driver stuff. And I hear that definitely helps with, what, video and audio and smoothing stuff out? Uh, but congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, you were asking if I had ever done Windows 7 before. No, I think, I think when I started doing Proxmox, I was just, like, Windows 10 guest. And, you know, I've only done a couple, so... Um, I mean, I, I've only needed a couple Windows guests, and Windows 10 always worked for me, so yeah, yeah. Tilburn, hello, hello all. PC Geek, Newegg has the Zen 3400G for what? What? For 30, oh, the Zen 5, 3400G for $139.99, and there's a $5 off promo code. Nice. PC Geek, yeah, thank you for telling me that. Hey, Zintra, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Uh, Hemlock, uh, yeah, thanks for the sub, I said that already, just making sure. Hey, that's, uh, that's super interesting. See, I'm new to the AMD world. And so I've been doing Intel for a long time. So the last like 24 hours, I've become a, an expert. I feel like on Ryzen, uh, I'm not really an expert, but I've learned more about Ryzen uh, 3, 4, 5, no, 3, 5, 7, um, not 9 so much, um, than I've ever even looked at before. So the G in it means it has the integrated graphics, right? Um, and so that's something that kind of throws me off with AMD. Um, and I think that, if I'm not mistaken, that 3400G, oh, man, I can't believe I, I'm knowing these stats now. I think that one's the one, I think all the Gs in general, so I think that means they have graphics on board, right? And that, and most of them, if not all, are only four core, eight thread. And so I was looking at the, I was looking at the um, 2600 and it's six cores, 12. Oh, it's a five core? Oh yeah, it's a six core. Wait, five, six core? The 3400G? Oh, see, see, yeah, I, I need to get on this. Anyways, um, the whole onboard graphics, not onboard graphics kind of thing, like I get it, 
but I don't like it. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'm so used to Intel, right? Where it's just gonna come on board. Um, and the core count and everything's gonna be the same for the same product name. Um, and so I've noticed that, um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, uh, at least when I looked, um, all of the G's were only four core. And that meant you got the onboard graphics. And so it meant eight, eight threads. And so I'm like, okay, that kind of stinks because I'm, I'm kind of building this other system. I want, I need onboard graphics. I don't want to use any PCI Express slots. Like I, I, I only want onboard graphics. Maybe I've been spoiled with Intel for a long time where it's just, it just comes as part of the chip. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to think about G versus non-G. The non-G has two less cores, but it has onboard graphics. And then, so you got to buy up, you got to make sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, all this stuff that comes with it. But I'm, 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 I think I'm figuring it out. Um, anyways, um, that sounds like a good deal. Uh, because what I was looking at was the, uh, Ryzen 5, uh, 2600, um, for 139.99. But then I realized, well, now I got to buy a GPU and I don't want to buy a GPU. Not just because I don't want to buy one, because I don't want to use... Uh, the PCI Express slot for a GPU. Anyways, got something planned and I've just been mentally building this thing in my head for a long time and then I started building it in my Amazon cart and now I'm like, I kind of have to go back to the drawing board on a few things. Hey, yeah, thanks for thanks for spending those points. All right, uh, Penguin Airlines. Oh, it's an air purifier, nice. Blue Air, Blue Air, Blue Pure 411, two pack for 160 was already on the uh, top seller on Amazon for HEPA purifiers at 225. Dang, that sounds like a heck of a deal. Awesome, congratulations on that purifier. Uh, I think we could all use some cleaner air. <laughs> I have one that's in the basement. Oh yeah, man, you guys are fighting for lights. What are we going with? All right. Uh, yeah, that, that one's a little, eh, I need to work on that color right there. Especially the, the, the weird bracketing that's going on or, or whatever it's called. Um, Toastface Gorilla, iPhone hasn't done any ground thing groundbreaking in ages. Yeah, that, I, I, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. I think a lot of, I mean, uh, to be honest, not a lot of phones have besides like foldable glass. Man, you guys are fighting for the lights. I like it. Spending those points. Um, uh, but not a lot of phones have, unless it's like bendable glass or like something like that. I mean, most phones just, you know, spec bump, uh, more camera lenses, um, and then maybe, you know, some additional features around either AR tiny features or tiny features around, you know, image processing, which, you know, some of them are doing it in the cloud anyway. So, but yeah, Hemlock, looking at my guacamole with my free BSD system that I have virtualized in Proxmox. Yes, yeah, nice. Uh, sweet. Yeah, let me know how that goes. Um, Penguin Airlines has spent a lot of time in a limited spaces now, so I've been feeling like HEPA purifier would be a really good idea. I think so too. And I'm, uh, one, I'm glad you're able to find them. Man, you guys are spending those points. I like it. It's, it's almost, it's almost like a little party in here. Yeah, go crazy. Um, but I'm glad you can find one. Um, and, uh, glad it was on sale because they're kind of hard to find. I, I think in general, starting now, not only because allergy season, because everything COVID, and people wanting to still have people inside, I think a lot of people are gonna either install whole home air purifiers or buy tons of them and uh, hook them up in their house so that they can maybe have people inside. I don't know, I'm speculating, speculating. Um, uh, John, uh, guacamole works great for, yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Takano, exact same opinion, like 5G has existed on another device, the League of Legends runs linear and everything and camera and minor updates, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hemlock, nice. PC Geek Plus, phone mark is saturated recently. So many free offers from providers. Yeah, that's a good point too. Bread Puncher, I like the uh, look of HomePod, uh, but the no Spotify integration kind of sucks in my honest opinion. Bread Puncher, I agree. I totally agree. I, they'll be there. 100% they'll be there. Like it would be, I mean, I, I say that. I honestly feel like it's like either Apple or Spotify holding out on something. Because he even said like, Oh, and we'll have other providers soon or something. You know, we're working with other providers to get this working. And that was basically, oh yeah, that's Spotify. And you know, they, I think they had to say that without saying it. So people are like, what, well, you're not gonna mention Spotify? Um, but yeah, I think it'll be there. I think it'll be there and who knows? I mean, Apple could be just pushing their, their platform first like they do with most stuff. Uh, but yeah, totally, totally, totally weird. Um, 
Uh, Nero links. Nero links. Yeah, guacamole is pretty frictionless. Yes. Hemlock. The remote client we have at my workplace doesn't support free BSD, unfortunately. Uh, looking for another solution. Oh, yeah. Holy Merc. Hola. How's it going? Ticano. The leaked uh, 120 hertz pro uh, vision thing wasn't even a thing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I never saw a leaked photo about that, about the 120 hertz screen. I think you're talking about, uh, that people were, I don't know. Uh, I, I, honestly, I don't even know. It's 60 hertz now, right? Uh, were, the, were people speculating it was going to be 120? Um, Red Puncher, uh, the leak prices weren't right either, if I recall. Yeah, I, I didn't, I really didn't look at any, any speculation, uh, before this. Um, but I will say, like, I know a lot of people complain about it still being a lightning jack. I mean, I have so many right now, I don't really care. Would it be nice to be USB-C? I think so. Um, but my bet is, is that they're gonna go totally to plugless soon. Um, and I'm just totally speculating. But I, I think Apple will go to, to plugless or cordless, you know, phone, including charger, um, to where... They don't want to alienate people twice. I think, I honestly think the lightning jack on the iPhone will be the last port we see on it that you can plug into. Uh, and that's just my speculation. You know, I, I, um, I, maybe I'm giving them way too much credit, you know, for hanging on to their proprietary plug. Um, but I honestly think that's what it is, is that they're just gonna, in some version soon, they're gonna be like, look, no wires. Um, wireless charging only or whatever and so they don't have so they won't have to shift people twice on the USB-C and then on to no plug at all I don't know that's just my my speculation who knows probably wrong um homeland news so far it seems like you can tie the IAM users to Aurora serverless my ser my SQL users but you have to use a defined DB specific permission with the database itself like, you couldn't write all the IAM, IAM policy restricting access to a particular table, but you could create an IAM role that is linked to MySQL database user that I guess has permissions configured for it with MySQL. So that makes no sense. It probably makes a ton of sense, but it's super hard for me to dissect that sentence right now and figure out what each piece, I mean, what you're trying to uh, accomplish. But no, I'm, I'm sure it totally makes sense. I'd, I'd buy it if you were selling it. Home lab new. Uh, Tilburn. Don't do Apple. Mainstream home automation, such as, uh, I don't do Apple. Mainstream home automation, such as Google or Alexa. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I only use Google Home a little bit. I, I mean, uh, th there's very few things I do. I tell, I tell Google to turn off all the lights in here, which it will, because there are many light bulbs in here, and I don't feel like going into any app and toggling them all off. Then I'll tell Google to play a specific song, radio, or playlist. Um, that's about it. That's about it. Every now and then I'll, I'll use Google as my calculator. If my hands are full, I'll say, or I don't want to, you know, whatever. I'll just say, Hey, what's 352 divided by 24.2. And <laughs> cause I don't feel like typing, but other than that, you know, I don't, I don't use it for much. Um, home lab new. I've decided to get a home pod mini. All right. I was hoping Apple would make something like it. And now it's finally come time. Nice home assistant. Uh, I feel I can trust. I totally agree. I totally agree. Because they anonymize all that stuff. Totally. Unique ID. Well, randomized ID. Uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, <laughs> doggo, yeah. Poor buddy. His his name's Buddy, too. Which, um, I mean, I have nothing against dogs who... I have nothing against dogs' names in general. Uh, but his name was Buddy. He's looking right at me. Uh, when we got him, uh, I mean, I, we wouldn't have named him Buddy and we were going to change his name, but we, he, it was the one thing he knew. <laughs> so we were like, we're not going to change his name. He knows it. But yeah, he's, uh, he's actually really chill right now. He's actually laying down, uh, which, is, which is crazy. Uh, but man, I, I mean, I've owned, you know, me personally, since I've been an adult, this is my third dog. And oh my gosh, he's so, he's a uh, fourth dog. He's such a handful. I've never had a dog like this. I've never had a dog that like wanted to attack me. <laughs> uh, it's kind of sad though, because when we when we mentioned that, they were like, "Well, you know, um, if we take him back, we're going to euthanize him." And we're like, "Nope, <laughs> staying with us." <laughs> so, anyways, uh, yeah, poor puppy. But he's he's good. He just he just gets crazy. He just has this every now and then. He'll just snap, and he's like 
oh yeah well i'm gonna bite the crap out of your hands and i'm like dude what are you doing uh and then other times he's super sweet like he is now he just he just has this weird thing where all of a sudden he turns into cujo and like a drop of a hat uh but anyways jathbrisk yep proxmox with lots of vms docker container true nas etc nice i found a really good deal on a 256 gig ram uh so i have lots of horsepower to play with nice uh is that ddr3 i think right probably on that cpu yeah let me know let me know what the deal was too ram is so expensive i, I was hinting that i'm kind of building something man ddr4 ecc so expensive we're talking like well not as expensive as non-ecc surprisingly um but ecc ram i've been finding for like 98 dollars a stick for 32 gigs uh which is like man you 128 gigs of ram you're paying 400 bucks it's like oh my gosh why can't ram be cheap again uh, but it's cheaper than desktop ram surprisingly at least the stuff i found uh major whitman hey thanks for the follow appreciate it uh penguin airlines him her wait where are we going oh no worries your, your mic makes uh him quiet yeah him yeah yeah no problem sorry yeah it was like every word i was talking he was just like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> um uh can we see the puppy well you got to sorry i'm just getting caught up yeah and i i brought him up here I, I would do it again if he'd come up here but who knows uh takano was looking at iron wolf red nas drives but no nope, still full price no prime day deals oh one thing i will notice too uh that i did notice is that other you know when when amazon has their prime days all the other sites kind of put stuff on sale at least a little bit sometimes they'll match the same things or sometimes they'll have an alternative on sale too you know i'm you know, if things are out in stock, look look at Newegg, Micro Center, or Best Buy. You'd be surprised. And then while you're there, you'd be surprised at some of the things they have on sale that Amazon doesn't. I mean, it's all it's all a you know it's all it's all marketing. Um, but uh, yeah, I noticed Newegg has a lot of stuff on sale too. And uh, I'm man, I used to always shop Newegg, um, but haven't been so much lately. But when I went today, I was like. Add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. <laughs> Didn't buy it yet. I have a couple carts floating right now. Micro Center, Amazon, and Newegg. Just just need to pull the button. Um, Let's see, PC Geek. Uh, Iron Wolf's like never drop in price. I, uh, I agree, PC Geek. They did one time. I got them. I think in February, I bought my six, eight terabyte drives. And they were, I don't know, 50, 60 bucks off. Um, which by itself... Uh, was pretty good but when you multiply that by you know eight that's a lot of money or six i got six six eight terabytes so yeah multiply that by six it's 300 bucks yeah i totally agree um but they rarely do i think they they know their market like people buy them and either in dire need or in bulk so they're like either i'm building a new array so i need six four two you name it or one just died and oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up and plug it in and resilver my my array. But yeah, yeah. Um Toastface, grab some of the Iron Wolves during the Bitcoin sale a few months back. Nice, I didn't know that. Um Home Lab New, it's it is bad. I've only just realized that the square on the top of Tim's head isn't a window, but a mirror <laughs> back there. It is a mirror. Yeah, yeah, it is a mirror. Yep. Well, now you know yeah it totally is a mirror and now you can tell because the color is a, a little bit different but yeah yeah totally yeah it's uh it's kind of a weird place for a mirror but my my wife was like yeah we need to i mean when we shared this office it was like we need something over there like a picture or something and she wanted a mirror so i was like okay we'll put a mirror <laughs> so anyways <laughs> it is otherwise there would be someone outside with a bright flashlight right now uh shining it in and actually that's the reflection of this uh elgato key light right there um PC Geek, maybe try your luck on Black Friday. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, totally agree. Might be another good time to 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 buy too. I think I need to buy in between then. I don't think I can I don't think I can wait. But uh <laughs> oh you guys think Buddy's cute. I think oh I don't know where he is. Oh, maybe I can get him to come back up. I don't know. He does this thing where he'll sit right behind me and just wait for me. Until I until I pick him up, which it takes five attempts because he runs away every time and then finally he'll let me pick him up um oh what breed is he um he's part chihuahua and we think he's part miniature pincher not sure i think he's yeah he's a he, we know he's a mix for sure um i think he's part chihuahua just because and then i think miniature pincher just because the way his like ch chest is shaped i don't know it's a really weird chest i've never seen a dog 
<laughs> with a chest shape like this. It's very, very contoured and uh, just big. I don't know. Um, PC Geek, uh, eBay has some pretty cheap SAS drives. Nice. What size, man? Yeah, let me know. Uh, Takano, board I have only has SATA, and I'm out of PCIe lanes. Oh, man, that stinks. Um, what? Uh, so what What else do you want to plug into there, Takano? Uh, has SATA, and I'm out of PCIe lanes. Uh, PC Geek, uh, there is audio support. Uh, you can add it, uh, but, but I can't get it to play. Oh, on the Spice drivers. Yeah, let me know. Um, Hemlock, yeah, dude, love your videos. Hey, thanks. Sorry, just getting caught up. And plus, um, I'm probably real behind because I had to like track down my dog. Uh, Hemlock, we are starting to deploy Proxmox at MSP. Uh, I work at. Uh, it works great. Love it. Wait, MSP, as in the airport MSP? Which MSP? Uh, because if so, that's my airport, and that would be awesome if I could say my airport uses Proxmox. But I don't know if that's what you mean by uh, the MSP. Um. Uh, PC Geek, uh, Vega 11 graphics. Uh, it's a five core, six core, uh, 3400. Yeah, four core. That's what I was thinking. Never mind, it's four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did this long, uh, oh, managed service provider. Okay, Penguin. Thank you. Thank you. The MSP that I know is, uh, Minneapolis St. Paul Airport. So <laughs> whenever I say MSP, I'm like, what? <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, just going back to the, the AMD thing, trying to make something work. Maybe I'm trying to make it work too hard. But I'm I'm I want to, I'm building some some things, plural, awesome, um, and I just I just need to make it work. Anyways, I'm, I'm I, I got I got burned uh, at least in my head with a plan I had. So I burned myself because I didn't do enough research on uh, something I want to build and just um, not really understanding that GPU um, or onboard uh, integrated graphics didn't come with every Ryzen. Uh, that's what you get for being Intel, Team Intel, for 10 years or something. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, Josh, focus. How's it going? I used Proxmox on my home server for a few years, uh, but it was overkill. Uh, for what I needed now, everything is on an Ubuntu server and Docker containers. All right. You just said, hey, no more hypervisor. I'm just going straight bare metal and then doing Docker containers. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, man, uh... <laughs> the great light fight yeah yeah you guys keep going spend those points thank you for earning them and uh also thank you for spending them uh it is gonna turn into raven here it was for a little bit um toast space gorilla um all the tech's a bit boring they're grasping for innovation yeah oh yeah yeah and phones i agree uh <laughs> pc King. tim's neighbor's gonna be like what's going on in there um yeah they kind of they kind of do <laughs> they kind of do already um yeah, a few of my neighbors have been like, um, why are your lights pink and blue sometimes? You know, because I, I don't tell everyone what I do. I mean, you know, um, so I don't explain a lot to them. Um, I, I have since, but a few times, uh, one of the neighbors, she said, yeah, like, why why do I see your lights pink and blue sometimes in there? I'm like, oh, you know, I play games and stuff like that. As soon as you say that, they're kind of like, okay. And I was like, yeah, I stream too. And she's like, oh, really? And then, like, other people have kind of said it, too. And then um, one time, my my wife, when I mean, when she drives by, when she comes back home, she has to circle our block just because the way it's laid out. And she's like, here's what our house looks like when you're streaming. And it's just like, you know, a dark house. And then, you know, these two windows that are, you know, one's, well, now they'd be green, but one's pink and one's blue. I was like, hey. Yeah, people know that uh, there's some serious business going on in here then. <laughs> um, Penguin Airlines. Yeah, like the scan lines are weird, uh, but like the color, it's my favorite uh, orange pineapple V8. It's like, my, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, on, on the lights. Awesome. Yeah, I, I got I to gotta tune it a little bit. It's, it's a lot of, lot of uh, peachy, peachy orange pineapple, like you said. Um, thank you. Yeah, I have some tuning. There should be a little more orange in there. Uh, I think those two should be orange and the rest should be kind of pink, like a big sun in the middle or something. I don't know. I don't know what I was going for. Uh, I do have one called America. I haven't rolled out yet. I can actually show you and change it back, maybe. I don't know, but it's a red, white, and blue one. I haven't rolled it out yet because I can't really get the red, white, and blue like working all that great. Don't worry, I'll change it back. This one's called America. That's America. <laughs> I haven't rolled this one out yet because I can't get the, the white in the middle or the red to look that great. And now that I look at this, I realize it's backwards. 
Um, but yeah, I'll uh, I'll figure it out. Um, so more to come on that. Uh, Shoko Samurai, is it possible to assign ports after pulling the rancher container onto Ubuntu? I followed the instructions on rancher site to persist, uh, but the ports didn't assign. So is it possible to assign ports after uh, pulling the rancher container onto Ubuntu? I think it is, um, and I think uh, the PC Geek linked something on this too. Um, it's it's not easy. It is possible. Um, and so, like, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but the PC Geek links something in, in Discord. It might even be in the Rancher channel. Um, is possible. Um, not fun. Not fun. So if you just did it, I would just say, kill that container and spin one up again. Um, but, yeah, yeah, not fun at all. Um, yeah, because when you do that the first time, it configures more than, you know, it configures more uh, than just that Rancher UI. It's also configuring uh, some load balancers, configuring Kubernetes, uh, I think in their quest to make it super easy, they didn't make that piece really easy to be able to change it. So, uh, rip my points, you only have 4K left. You can change it all day. <laughs> you can change these lights all day, Takano. Thank you. Uh, I think you, you you have plenty of points. Uh, see here, Shuckle Samurai, uh, you could just remove and redeploy the container. Oh yeah, yeah, PC Geek, you followed up. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think you can, but then I think, I think what you linked, uh, there might be some additional configuration you need to do. I always have a hard time finding that post too, and I, I blame it on Rancher's SEO, uh, but I should have that somewhere where I can easily refer to it because I can never find it again uh, every time someone asks. Uh, Takano used to be up to 10K when he first added the lights effects, and uh, which is why I'm broke. Yeah, you did spend 10K on it too. <laughs> That's when it was at 10K, and I was like, it's a little high. I should probably drop it down a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, John, it was 10K, I promise. Uh, and I was like, That's too much. Uh, but I, I have no idea. Uh, I guess I should have a better idea. Uh, but the point um, scale. Uh, there's some scale based on whether you're a sub or not. I don't know. I left it all default Twitch. I figured their defaults were pretty sensible, and I wasn't going to go turn some knobs until I understood what all the knobs did. Uh, and then I figured, you know what? I'll just I'll just drop the points instead. It was easy. Easy move for me, because I'm like, I don't... I mean, if you guys want to spend a 1,000 points, do it. 10,000? Shouldn't have to wait that long. You know what I mean? Like, I think you'll earn a 1,000 just being in the stream for this one. Um, home lab new. I am 22 points away from being able to change the lights again. Yeah, just speaking of. Um, let's see, Toast Face Grill. I'm not a big uh, Apple fan, but Lightning Port was best port. Hey, I, I think it's okay too. Uh, I have no qualms with it. I think people are, you know, people just want some consistency across all their stuff so that, you know, when they grab a USB-C cable for something else, it'll just work there too. Um, you know, for, for, for all the things for basically charging, you know what I mean? You can grab one charger instead of two. Every time you can put one charger in the car or in your backpack instead of two for all the things. But I do think they're going, they're going once they go, uh, portless, uh, um, I guess what I'm saying is I think they're holding out because, uh, they're going to go portless and no sense of moving people twice. Um, let's see, Takano, um, it was called like promotion and stuff. Uh, it was for 120, okay, refresh rate, but it didn't come to happen, just stayed at 60. Yeah, 120 on the phone, that'd be crazy. Um, I mean, I could see where they would, where they would do that. Uh, iPad Pro, isn't that, uh, has the higher refresh rate? And I think, um, I don't know if it's 120. I know that it traditionally has been higher than, um, normal iPads and iPhones. And I think a lot of that had to do with the pen too, because like you need a super high refresh rate so that when you draw, there's no lag on the pen. But I don't know what it is now on the Pro. I thought it was higher. I thought it was higher. Um, Penguin Airlines, I think that's crazy though, given how they already use C on their laptops. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And they use C on their iPad Pros. Also, the latest iPad Pros also use C. I just have a feeling that like they don't want to move the phone to C too, because I, I have a feeling they're going to just be like all wireless or something weird. Um, let's see, um, Josh Focus, uh, Neuralex, uh, I haven't really used it yet, I need to sit down with it at some point, uh, sorry, lost track of that thread, probably because my dog was going crazy, um, yeah, let me know if that's something you need, uh, help with, um, Penguin Airlines, whatever, I'm not an Apple consumer yet, I kinda am, I kinda am, in some regard, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm just Apple, Google, Microsoft, you, whatever, Linux, you name it. I, 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 it's hard to be 
you know, all, all in one are, are, are all in with one company. Cause like so many products I have do so many different things or do things a little bit different or do things a little bit better. So, Hey John, thanks for, thanks for, uh, sticking around, dude. Appreciate it, man. Have a good night. Home lab new. Don't worry. It makes sense. <laughs> it makes no sense to me either. Uh, Shoka Samurai, I'll try again. Just not sure what is signing the ports. I'm copying the code straight in. All right. PC Geek, sure they aren't being used by something else? Oh, you guys are trying to figure this out. Love it. Uh, Bread Puncher, uh, now that Portainer has updated past version 2.0, would you consider making a new installation deployment guide considering the, ins the installation has changed a fair bit, Tim? Um, I'm not sure. And hopefully it hasn't. Um, I think the one thing that I saw that changed um, was just the YAML file that you point to. And um, I'm a little bit disappointed that it did change because I verified with the creator <laughs> of Portainer four times. Are you absolutely sure that this is not going to change when you release two? And, it, and I'm not saying change ever. I'm just saying the install process because I'm working on something and I would like to do it along with your launch. And then he said, absolutely not. Nope. Nope, we're going to change only the YAML, and that's only behind the scenes. Everything will be the same. And so I noticed that two things have changed, minor things. Um, so will I make a new um, tutorial? Probably not, only because I the things that did change, um, I updated in the documentation. And so that's, that's kind of tough. I mean, I, I just did that thing like a month and a half ago, I think. So uh, no, I, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm bound by time. I got, I, I, I have... I barely have enough time for one video a week. And so I'm definitely not going to recreate content because a couple of things changes, but that's a good thing to bring up because you know, when, when things do change, I I'm pretty good about going into my own documentation that accompanies the thing and updating that. Um, so I advise like, take a look at that. If that needs to change, let me know. I'll definitely update it for sure. Um, but the, the only thing that I noticed change was that the URL that you point to uh, when you configure your cluster for the first time um, had changed. And so I updated that in documentation. But let me know if it's something major because you, you seem to think that it's changed a fair bit. And I, I'd love to know uh, what pieces are. And I would love, I'd love to make those changes in the documentation too. Um, Tilburn, he must be chilling because of the disco lights. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, Takano, hey, buddy was the name of my previous dog who was also a chihuahua, chihuahua. Feisty little dogs, they are. Yeah, and, and just just again to clarify, nothing against the name buddy. Uh, I just like, we wanted, I wanted to name him Vim. <laughs> uh, because I've had a, uh, I have a dog named Nano. <laughs> and I had a dog named Pico. Um, and so I wanted to name him Vim. Um, but his name was Buddy, and that's the only thing he knew and understood so like i couldn't change it uh but anyways um but yeah he's uh he's 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 pretty wild but i agree feisty dogs and he's got man i, I won't go into it but man he he has this i forget what the the instinct is called but whenever he sees anything moves he fixes it he fixates on anything moving and then he runs to attack so he's like a super good guard dog uh even though he's small like i'm I'm scared of him sometimes because he, he bites the crap out of me sometimes. Um, Neuralinx. Uh, oh, since you have experience with Rancher, can you give me a rundown on why Rancher is nice? I test Rancher out and I don't see any advantages over running uh, Kate's normally. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, that's a great question. If you run Kate's normally, um, you're, I think you're in a good, you're in a good spot. Um, most of the people, and even me for one, um, have a hard time spitting up Kubernetes in general, um, just getting Kubernetes spun up, bootstrapped and working. Um, so obviously Rancher helps you do some of that. Rancher also, um, as you saw, has a GUI. Some people like GUIs, some people don't. Uh, and sometimes it's nice to actually, you know, have a GUI to um, um, validate some of your YAML uh, before you submit it to kube control. Hey, Neuralink, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Um, so there's that. So, yep, I get a lot of forms and validation to fill out YAML before I submit it to Kubernetes and uh, to Kube Control. Um, Rancher also makes uh, IAM, or authentication, super easy. And so that's not something I've touched on yet. I did a little bit, um, but that's only for the GUI. Uh, but you can actually, you know, do some deeper... Um, 
access management with third-party system, Active Directory, Azure, all that stuff, uh, which they give you really easy. So um, that's more on the enterprise side. Um, then there's, I, I mean, what else is there? Um, you know, uh, there's the built-in. So they have the built-in CI and uh, CI for both GitLab and, and uh, GitHub, which is kind of a nice feature. Um, don't use it myself because I build out my pipelines individually and I don't want to vendor lock into Rancher, if that makes sense. You'll probably, eh, been around for a while, you can kind of see why I always say separation of concerns, and, but a lot of that has to do with vendor lock. I don't want to get vendor locked into a certain thing or, or do something only a certain platform uh, provides and do it their way because then it's hard to migrate off. I mean, that question came up today in our Discord. Like, why, why don't you just install Docker right on Proxmox? And while I know I can, um, I don't want to do anything directly on Proxmox that's going to keep me on Proxmox any longer than I have to be. Not that I'm going to go anywhere, but again, like, it's this whole idea of, like, I don't, I don't want to do one-offs um, um, in configuration. So anyways, um, and then on top of all of that, like, um, Rancher makes configuring mult or managing uh, multiple clusters uh, fairly easy um, and uh, it's cloud agnostic too. Um, I mean, I, I, if you're in a cloud right now running Kubernetes, um, they're giving you a UI to, to, to manage it, to see it, to see health and, you know, to, to just basically, they're giving you a UI over, over um, Kubernetes. Um, but each one of those UIs are also um, uh, uh, provided by that cloud provider. So Azure has one, GCP has one, AWS has one. Um, but if you want to be cloud agnostic, you know, uh, Rancher helps you do that. And it will help you to deploy it into to multiple clouds or do hybrid cloud and deploy some at home, some in AWS, some in Azure, some in GCP, a little bit of each and move them around. And so... Yeah, so it does a little bit of all that. So it's kind of like, you know, an orchestrator for your orchestrator. <laughs> um, so not only is it a UI, it does a lot of those things. And, I'm, and there's tons of things it does too that I'm not, you know, either I don't use, I'm not aware of, or just can't think of right now. Um, but it's, um, you know, in, in general, um, it helps you spin up and manage Kubernetes, uh, I think, fairly easy. Um, and so, yeah, if you're familiar with you know, Spin, one, getting Kubernetes up and running um, and then managing it all um, and you have visibility it, uh, to it through a terminal. Yeah, it's super. That's that's awesome. Might not be a good fit, but if you want to do any of those other things I talked about, that's where I think they shine. OK, so uh, Tilburn. Uh, but yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, no, I don't think a lot of people have asked that specific question. A lot of people usually, you know, pit it up against Portainer or anything else. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of high level why I would choose to, to for, for anything, I guess, to ma to manage my Kubernetes cluster. But yeah, great question. Uh, Tilburn, uh, I eBayed a 256 gig DDR4 ECC uh, eight sticks for 680. Hey, that's pretty good. That is good because I, like I was saying earlier, um, I was looking at 32 gig DIMMs of ECC um, and they were 98 bucks a piece, brand new. And so, you know, I need what eight of those to get to 256, which be 800 bucks brand new. So 680 sounds like a deal to me. Um, Jathbrisk, I got a 16 by 6 gig kit of 1066 DDR ECC3 for 240. Hey, that sounds like a great deal too. I need 32 gig sticks. I need I need four 32 gigs and probably DDR4. So that's what's killing me. Uh, is the density, <laughs> the density and the um, uh, density and the uh, the 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 um, what am I trying to say? The density and the, the class or whatever, DDR4 versus three. Uh, it's so expensive. PC Geek, I've been buying from Newegg since like 2004, I think. Yeah, me too, me too, for a long time. I think around there, same 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 spot. I was, uh, actually, I probably did a little bit before that too. Um, yeah, 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 but right within a couple of years, I, I have been too. That used to be my place to go. I mean, Newegg and Tiger, Tiger Direct. I mean, that was kind of all I ever went to and, and sprinkle in some mono price. Now it just seems like, man, uh, Amazon's so convenient and they compete on prices now. Um, actually, mono price is still still pretty cheap, even though they sell their stuff on, on Amazon. Going directly to mono price, man. If you want cheap cables, they got them. 
um, in which I went there last night. And I was like, man, what a breath of fresh air. I haven't been here in a while. Home Lab New. I'm not sure if it's uh, worth me upgrading to the iPhone 12 this year. I've almost out there, but my current phone is still good enough, so I'll keep it around for another year and wait for a 13 or 12S or whatever they call it. Yeah, that's awesome. I have a 7, and mine's mine's hurting, and it's battery. Well, it's battery plus performance. I'll put it that way, because, like, screens slow down when I, you know, switch... When I switch tasks, sometimes the next screen I pull up is like 10 frames per second and the touch is stinks. I don't know. Wasn't like this a couple months ago and I get it, but this is the first time I've like, I've had Apple upgrade <laughs> uh, outside of uh, basically their, their, their latest release um, demands more performance than my phone can give. I feel like, and this is the first time every, every other time I did it on my own free will. Uh, Takano, um, it was for SAS drives. Uh, I don't have another slot uh, to put a SAS card in. Oh man, that stinks, man. Yeah, yeah, that stinks. Uh, MSP, all right, managed service provider. All right, hello, your neighbors are wondering why you're changing the color every eight seconds, yeah. I, I think at this point, they're kind of like, sometimes it's green, sometimes it's pink, and sometimes it's blue. I think they figured out the color pattern, but, but yeah. Um, well, actually, I have new neighbors now, so they're not used to it. So, yeah, feel free to change them all you want. Let's give them a warm welcome. Uh, Tifu, Tifu Gate. Uh, what's the difference between Heimdall and Avocado? <laughs> avocado. Aren't they sort of the same or different? Uh, starting to mess with both. Um, I don't know Avocado. I, I know guacamole, <laughs> but I don't know Avocado. Um, but if you're talking about, um, you, you, well, I'll talk about what Heimdall is. I mean, it's basically uh, creating a, 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 a super lightweight, and I'll use this term loosely, dashboard uh, for sites that you care about. And so, um, so um, basically creating a bunch of icons to put on a web page. The cool thing about Heimdall is, is that it can actually, um, if the service you're pointing to supports it, uh, pull in data uh, for, those, for those buttons. So like on Pi-hole, I can see how many sites are blocked. Um, on Plex, I can see how many streams are currently being streamed or transcoded. Um, and so depending on the app and depending on the service, um, you could get have those um, icons kind of light up. I mean, think of it like widgets on phones, right? Widgets are just a quick way to, to launch an app. And now widgets can bring back some data. Well, that's kind of what Heimdall is, I think, trying to do uh, in the browser for your home lab services. Avocado, not so sure. But if you're talking about guacamole, that's just a big uh, gateway to remote access into all of your machines in one centralized location and from uh, a browser without any plugins. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. Penguin Airlines, I went in, I went, I went to a con a uh, conference out of town uh, once and was walking towards the Airbnb when I saw blue lights 40 floors up and asked my wife, I wonder if that's where we're headed. And it totally was. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what an awesome welcome that would have been. Yeah. Uh, Neuralinx. Uh, the only thing I wish that exists on iOS is Termux for Android. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know it. Uh, I don't know what Termux is. I, I assume it's... Is it the... Uh, is it the way you can run Android on your phone or Android terminal. I'm sorry, Linux terminal. Kayla Rain, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Hey, I have a big ask for you, if you're up to it. Can you make a new Rancher setup video since 2.5 that makes installation requires moon phases, <laughs> virgin sacrifice, and installation of Docker is not recommended. Uh, Kayla Rain, um, so, um, so I updated my documentation. The only thing different about, about 2.5 is you'll need to pass in a privilege flag now. Um, that's the only thing different that I've noticed and the only thing different in their documentation. Um, I don't, I, I don't recall them saying not recommend. Well, let's put it this way. The Docker installation they say is not recommended because it doesn't give you high availability. And so it's not recommended, uh, for production is what they're basically saying. And that's been there from the beginning. Uh, but for me, you know, I enjoy the simplicity of it. Um, and so, um, and I don't need um you know high availability yet um and so you know i've always just recommended the docker way because it's the easiest way to get started um however um that's not to say that people might not you know want uh or, or people may want high availability uh they may want multiple nodes um uh, uh for clusters 
And so the single node cluster using Docker for me was like, hey, you could run it in copy and paste command, right? And so that's that's the quick way to get started. Um, but let me know, let me know what you mean about it being super difficult. Like they added the privilege flag and maybe that's just what you're missing now. Um, I don't know that I would remake the Docker version of it, um, but there might be some more stuff coming. I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> But yeah, let me know. Let me know. Because if there is a problem, I'd love to up update my documentation too. Um, Neuralinks. I think the preferred way is installing Kube Cluster now. There are a couple of ways. Uh, yeah, yeah. Neuralinks. Uh, where is the documentation? Um, it's it's uh, So there's a couple ways to get to it. One, it's in my GitHub. So if you go to my GitHub, I have um, a repo called YouTube Videos. And every single YouTube video that I've ever done has some kind of documentation. If it requires additional commands, I've figured out something since, or has copy and paste commands, they'll all be there. If it's not and it's just me talking, probably won't be much in there. Uh, and also, if there's something in there that you need to fix or would like to fix, uh, definitely open a pull request. I mean, someone opened a pull request on it the other day, and uh, I love merging in people's fixes for documentation. I love it. Uh, and and you you get to, to light up your uh, your GitHub board too on your activity. <laughs> um, Kayla Rain, I'm with you. I gave up on it for me. It was too complicated for one. I need to do so. I run Portainer. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. If you don't need Kubernetes, yeah, absolutely. Portainer is a good option. Um, let's see, uh, Kayla Rain. If I knew how to do the inbuilt Helm thing, I just tie it into my FreeNAS scale install. Yeah, yeah, that sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, totally agree. Uh, that sounds awesome. Oh, and that's that. Uh, that was one of the other reasons I was I was gonna uh, uh, mention about using ranchers too is because they have their. I mean, for better or worse, for better or for worse, they have their own app store using Helm. That's as you guys have seen with traffic is them tying their you know their their app store to a certain version of a Helm uh, chart. Uh, which then is tied to some version of some app. But anyways, long story short, uh, they give you a quick and easy way to install Helm stuffs too. Um, Penguin Airlines, save Elacs for when you get a cat. Oh, Emacs, yeah. <laughs> Emacs, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, good one. Yeah, I will. Uh, yeah, uh, I still want to use Vim though. I still want to use Vim. And he, he is full of Vim and Vigor. This one, I thought it was a perfect name, but like I said, I, could, I couldn't change his name. Yeah, here he goes. He's going to go wild. Um, Pinot Noir Superstar, Vim and Nano. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. Need one named Ed. Yeah, totally. Just one, just totally random name, like Jeff. Like, hey, this is Vim, Nano, and <laughs> Vim, Nano, Pico, and Jeff, <laughs> or Ed. <laughs> yeah. Um, PC Geek. Uh, yep, you can tell I've worked nine and a half hours today. Yeah, man, that's a long day, man. Man, take care of yourself. Get some rest, dude. I haven't seen you in a while, too, so I'm glad to see you. I, it's funny when I don't see people's names in, in, um, you know, in Discord or, or Twitch. After a couple days, I'm like, I, I wonder about that name. Like, I've never met any of you <laughs> or know you, but I, I know your names. And so when I don't see names, I'm just like, hey, I'm, like I was the other day. wonder if Penguin Airlines is okay. <laughs> Uh, and then I start to think, like, how did he get that name? Like, is it like, you know, is that from South America to Antarctica? There's an airline that will take you there. And I, yeah, anyways, I know there's really not, but it, that's where my brain goes. Um, Mag oh, here we go. Mega Man's team. Like it. Uh, I'm thinking of getting a file server. All right. I'm unsure if I should do Proxmox and run TrueNAS as a VM or just do TrueNAS. Uh, it will be Plex. Uh, I also am wondering if it's possible to have a pool of all my Steam games. Puppy. <laughs> now he's doing the hopping thing. He does this other thing. Come here, puppy. Come on. Come on. Oh, all right, he's coming back up. This other thing he does... He does this hopping thing. When he wants things done his way, he'll just start hopping, like jumping, like four feet up in the air, as high as he could possibly go. He's not used to all this. Um, but uh, let's see here. Uh, also wondering if it's possible to have a pool full of my Steam games. Uh, but can the graphics be run from a separate PC? Or will I need a GPU pass through and the Steam games on the PC? Wow, this sounds as, like it's going to be kind of an advanced configuration. 
So let me put it this way. Um, if, if you want, so if this is going to be your, let's, let's kind of break down like what you're looking for. Like, I think you're saying like you want a file server, right? So you want some network attached storage. Um, but on top of that, you would like to, um, have all your steam games on it. Um, which would be over the network, like your library would be over the network. Um, and then the graphics can run from a separate PC or will I need a GPU pass through the Steam to stream games for the PC? Yeah, th this one's kind of complicated and so it's kind of mixing a lot of stuff that I've done before. So if you really, like, if you want a super advanced and kind of complicated um, <laughs> setup, you can do what I did, which, which is what I do. I have, you know, a, a bare metal server and then on top of that, I have Proxmox, and then I run virtual machines. In there, I do have a Windows virtual machine um, that I have a GPU pass through from um, the server down to the guest. And then so I can stream Steam games, I can encode video, I can do anything you could normally do on a desktop PC uh, within a server uh, through that video card. On top of that, I do also virtualize FreeNAS. Um, and then so, the way that I've done that is create a FreeNAS virtual machine. I have a HBA controller um, that attaches um, to my disk array, but attaches to disks. And then I pass that whole entire controller through um, to that guest, um, which is a virtual machine, which is FreeNAS. Um, and so um, if you're wanting to do all that, one, that's that's a huge thing to take on, uh, especially since you're saying, hey, I, I want to get a file server you don't have, an, you don't have one yet. Um, you can definitely do it. Um, but I think, um, you know, I think you got to just kind of think about, um, yeah, what, what you want out of it. And if you, what you want out of it is just a file server um, and maybe some lightweight virtualization. I mean, just going plain free NAS might, might be a good, good way to go because in free NAS you get you know, jails and plugins. So you kind of get, you know, virtual machines and kind of get containers. Um, but if you want to do virtualization, so if you want to flip that upside down and not have your, not have your file server or your NAS be your hypervisor, and then you can do what I do. And it gives you a ton of flexibility when it's on top of KVM and it's Proxmox and everything like that. And you get to pass stuff through. Um, I don't know if that's even possible on FreeNAS, never tried it. So to answer your question, um, is it possible to have a pool full of all my Steam games? Um, kind of, um, kind of. So if you want to do in-home streaming, you can do exactly what I was talking about there. But having your Steam games like on a drive that you could play either locally or remotely, I don't know if that's possible or it would be a great idea. Uh, just because it would have to be yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. Because even if you did it over the network, performance might not be great or wouldn't be great uh, from either the virtual machine or or here. Uh, but if you wanted to stream everywhere, that's a different story. So, um, yeah, I, I, I hopefully that kind of kind of answers your question. Um, yeah, th there's a lot going on in there. So I'm sorry, I'm just trying to dissect it. So at the end of the day, if you do want to stream, use Steam and home streaming and stream those games to any um, screen in your house using the Steam app or the Steam Hub app or whatever it's called, yes, you will need a video card in that machine that's doing the streaming, just like you would on your desktop machine, right? You can't, you can't just use integrated graphics stream the games from your desktop PC to your Apple TV or whatever your other device is and expect really good graphics or performance in general. Um, so if you're planning on do that, I mean, you should treat that virtual machine as if it's um, a PC sitting on your desk. However, it just happens to be virtualized inside of a server. So, you know, same kind of requirements, same kind of thought process, um, you know, and, and specs you would need for something like that. I don't know. Uh, hopefully that answers. And if you need clarification on stuff, yeah, shoot, shoot me more questions. Um, CompuKid, uh, I just installed Rancher 2.5 while I followed Tim's video. And the only issue I had, yeah, the privilege switch. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I just flipped mine over to 2.5 last night too, or 2.51. I saw that roll in like the next day or something. Um, let me see, Neuralinks, uh, why not just run ZFS or Ceph uh, on Proxmox instead of avoid the NAS entirely? There you go, you can do that too. 
Um, Killer Rank is not really designed for that. I'm kind of, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I said already in this stream, but I, I kind of, you know, I, I have my buckets of um, capabilities I want from systems I run. And I let what I think, uh, my preferences, um, run that system or provide that capability for me. And so if I, if I want network attached storage, I go to FreeNAS to get my network attached storage. And I only do network attached storage from FreeNAS. You know, might be iSCSI, might be whatever, but you know, Samba shares or NFS, whatever. Um, but it's gonna be my storage over the network. So I don't use any other features, jails, plugins, all that stuff. Uh, they're probably like, oh man, why not? But um, I don't. Same goes for Proxmox. Just want a hypervisor, not gonna use anything else in there but a hypervisor. And I kind of do that same thing all over the place. Um, you know, Pi-hole, DNS, right? I think it's a super great um, DNS, uh, an ad blocker, does a lot of great things. Um, you know, and so I know there are other products out there that can pull in block lists and all this stuff, but I feel like for me, it's, it's the best, you know, DNS ad blocker I can use. And so I use that. And so, and I don't use it for anything else. Like I could with DHCP, but you know, I don't because I have a DHCP server on my firewall that I think it handles it a little more integrated than it would be on Pi-hole. So anyways, I, that's, it's probably makes it overly complicated. Um, but in, to me, in my head, it simplifies it um, to to dedicate, you know, a role to this service or machine or, or container and let it just do that one thing. It's the whole like once and well thing in my head. But anyways, uh, hopefully that helps. Um, Neuralinks. Uh, I think the nice thing about Proxmox is you can just manage it on the CLI. Set up an Ansible playbook to ensure setup consistency. I like it. Yeah, I need to do some more Ansible for sure. I regret setting up uh, my network on Unify. Uh, have to do everything through the GUI. That's unfortunate. You can't use the CLI for Unify. Um, do they have a CLI? I don't know this. I don't know it. I assume they did. Like you can SSH in and stuff. It's probably their own DSL like it would be for Cisco or anyone else. But yeah, curious. PC Geek. Oh my God, I remember Tiger Direct loved those catalogs. Yeah, I never got the, I never got the catalogs, but I, I, you know, I, went, I went there to buy parts. It's where I bought my dual MP board, my Tyan dual MP board, AMD MP, which is the last time I had an AMD processor, if that tells you, around the XP MB, MD days. Uh, Gimli Theon, hey Tim, how are you doing tonight? Good. Um, Trimox is the SSH client for iOS. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Our Neuralinks uh, does a lot more than SSH. You can install some Nix programs too. Nice. Um, there is Termius in iOS, I like it. Uh, PC Geek, uh, 2.5 Rancher makes its own initial cluster. It seems to, like its own internal node nested inside the Rancher container. Useful for, oh yeah, 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 yeah. agreed. Um, useful for installing uh, TCP trace route, for example. Yeah, I like it. Um, Tilburn, temp on my Quanta to you with dual E5 2678v3s run super chill at 43, 60% load. Yeah, that's pretty chill for sure, <laughs> you know? Um, I install IPMI tool on Proxmox and I can control the fans through BMC IPMI2 inband command. Super convenient. Nice, Tilborn. Yeah, the PC Geek linked uh, something earlier in Discord on how to, you know, program or change the, the fans uh, on, on my 710, which I need to do. And also, I was thinking about containerizing that script. I mean, I give that full credit to that Reddit post. Um, but I was thinking about containerizing that script because I don't, I, you know, I, I don't want to just run scripts on my stuff. Oh, I want it to be in a container. And it's all over the web, too. It does it all over the uh, iDRAC, I think. But yeah, anyways, yeah, that's awesome. Super chill. It seems like at full load uh, or 60% load, 43, seems pretty good. Um, Ed is the original Unix editor, okay? Is it? Uh, you guys are, yeah, I, you know, I could say, yeah, it is, or um, is it, or seems like, uh, uh, it could be, it could be, that could be a troll, because, you know, editor, Ed, I I don't know enough about uh, Unix, uh, I'm going with, eh, not really, uh, that's the tongue sticking out, uh, that seems like t something Takana would just be like, yeah, totally, totally is, dude, <laughs> Penguin Airlines, yeah, it was not uh, really okay, lol, incidents, like crazy at work, wife had a car accident, etc. But it's all getting better now. Man, that sucks, man. Nothing, uh, nothing. Yeah, ruins your your day or all your plans like a car accident. Been in a couple of my life, and it's just like, man, just sucks. 
sucks in a lot of ways. Um, but also just because, man, you, now you got to find a plan B for everything. Uh, Penguin Airlines, regarding my username, I came up with it many years ago when I was trying to come up with an IGN that didn't have any numbers, uh, but was unlikely to be stolen uh, from me as I grew it on additional platforms. I like it. Yeah, I, I like it. Still a couple of sites. Uh, it has been taken on over the years and I get a bit salty about it. I chose it because I was getting really excited about Linux at that time. So penguins were on the mind and I always found the irony that source of humor. Penguins <laughs> would make the most motivated. Penguins would make the most motivated. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, super awesome. Man, that, that's surprising that, that your name is taking it, taken at some sites because it's pretty original to me. Um, airline pilots couldn't... Airline pilots uh, because they could get paid well and fly. Plus, I really like to fly and ride motorcycles myself. Awesome. Yeah, that's... Uh, I've, I've never ridden a motorcycle. I want to. Uh, I mean, I've ridden dirt bikes, but never like, you know, a real motorcycle. I've done mopeds, dirt bikes, uh, but that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing it. Now I know, now I know the secret behind uh, Penguin Airlines. And now I'm going to go squat at every new social media, social site. So anytime you see Penguin Airlines is taken, this guy right here, I'll be charging for squatting. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Uh, Gimli Theon, I thought it was a reference to the an, uh, animation film Madagascar or something. Um, Mega Man's team, uh, thanks for the advice. No, hopefully, uh, hopefully that makes sense and hopefully it wasn't just me just kind of rambling. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you have more questions. Uh, Gimli Theon, Tim, uh, you have two GPUs in your main server, uh, but you need two, or can you pass one through multiple GMs, um, VMs or containers? Currently, I have, so I have two Proxmox servers right now, and I have one card passed through in each server. At one point, I did have two cards in one server, but I moved them apart because one work, one's going to be deprecated soon. Um, you know, it's just running one workload that still needs to be there. And so now I have one card in each server. I did have two cards in one server. Um, and uh, But you can't pass one through to multiple. So it's one to one. So I had uh, two Windows VMs, um, two video cards, and they're both passed through to each of them individually. Um, but I had... Uh, but yeah, now I moved one. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's super fun stuff. Um, but now, now it's one's on the Windows Virtual Machine, and then after this last video I did, one's now uh, attached to my Kubernetes cluster, so that my Docker containers can use my NVIDIA video card for their workloads. It's kind of crazy, uh, but uh, it works out pretty good. So only does my Plex Trend coding for now. Uh, but I'm I'm. I'm uh, interested in finding other containers to add to there. And it's nice to know that now that if I have one that requires or can use um, the NVIDIA, you know, plug-in container, uh, it can. So, um, Kayla Rain, having storage over the network for a Steam library would work pretty well. Nice. I uh, just need 10 gigabit network cards set up to pull as an iSCSI target. Oh, yeah. It'll work just as fast as an SSD then. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. An iSCSI target. For sure. Uh, that would. If you had 10 gigabit. Yeah. Um, Penguin Airlines, IOP sensitive things can be problematic here, uh, but a lot of things would work well over high speed uh, linked to iSCSI. Yeah, that's a, that's a good call. I, I use uh, iSCSI, but mine's not uh, 10 gig. But yeah, that's a good call. Because what, then you can do block storage and just treat it like a hard drive. I like it. Uh, Mega, Man's, Mega Man's team, good to know. Uh, my secure gift. What topic tonight? It's everything. It's everything. Whatever people want to talk about, my secure gift. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Um, Ilu, check out LandCache, monolithic for Steam caching on your local LAN. Yeah, I have looked into it. And they have a Docker container too. Yeah, uh, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, they've been developing that thing for a long time. Uh, but I have looked into it. They do have a Docker container. I thought about doing something on it at some point. But I was like, you know, how many times... You know, do I have a bunch of people here who need to install Steam games? I thought it'd be cool as a topic. Uh, but then I started thinking, like, how practical would it be uh, for me to do it? And I was like, um, I guess not. Maybe sometime, though. But yeah, it's it's super cool. I, I didn't hear about it until, I don't know, maybe six, seven months ago. But it's been out there for a while. Uh, but yeah, thanks for thanks for reminding me. I need to look into it again and see how, how it's evolved. Gimli Theon, Unify has SSH as far as I know, but it's quite limited and it depends on which Unify software you're running. Dream Machine is running on U Unify OS, 
And that's more of a limited uh, than older edge OS where most products are based on. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I've been thinking about getting more uh, unified stuff. Um, unfortunately, that, that kind of stinks about not being able to automate stuff with uh, a CLI um, over SSH probably. But yeah. Hey, uh, Josh Focus. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Eva, 3311. I'm not sure if I called that one out, but thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Sorry if I didn't see that earlier. Um, but yeah, that's that's good to know. I've been thinking about getting some more unified stuff. We'll see. Uh, the PC Geek, uh, you could containerize it, uh, but it needs access to the IPMI device. Uh, you have to use LAN based, uh, but then you have to open up iDRAC with password saved in a file uh, if you have the iDRAC segmented secure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I thought that was all over the network. Um, and I, I did see in the script, it was passing in the password. I would put that as an environment variable. Um, and I thought it would communicate with the iDRAC over uh, HTTPS. I could be wrong. I'll need to look at it again. Um, but I, you know, I, I looked at that script twice for like 30 seconds and I thought, hmm, seems like a good case for, for a Docker container uh, and run it in Kubernetes, especially if it's going to be pinging the thing every 60 seconds. Like I'm not going to let that script like run forever. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll look into it some more. Um, M3, M3333, hey, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. And Starbuck907, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Um, Neuralinks, config is not also persistent over SSH. Uh, they have a config.gateway.json file for persistence on their cloud controller, but a lot of settings carried over and migrating. Um, Tilburn, Quadro and SRIOV equals a whole new world. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. That would be awesome to be able to have that and be able to share something like that. Hey, Karam, Karambu, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 um, a lot of people have been talking about P2000s. I think, uh, I think uh, the PC Geek was talking about one. Um, I've been looking into it for, for yeah, uh, just to be honest, I've been looking into one. Um, I've seen them anywhere from... 250 to 400 i'm not sure how much they should cost craven yeah you got one man i, I saw you post it in discord too um i'm not sure how much they should cost so let me know um but um i like them for a couple of reasons one i, I mean and correct me if i'm wrong but i think the p2000s they don't draw any external power i think they'll they'll pull a max of 75 watts or something like that uh, which is great uh, for an R710, right? Because if you have an R710, you don't have external power that you can plug in. And if you want it, you got to go all hacksaw or crazy and cut wires or do some other kind of scary things to pull power from other slots uh, that a lot of Bitcoin miners do. And uh, and and so I, P2000s look, look like a great fit for me. Maybe, possibly in the future, we'll see. I, I've been using my, you know, consumer grid cards and they're great, but... Um, they take up two slots and I'm tired of them taking up two slots. They don't need to take up two slots. Um, but anyways, I, I, I like the P2000s. Hopefully I can find one for roughly, I, I mean, I pay 200 bucks for sure. Um, anything over that, I, I think I can wait. I don't know that they'll ever come down in price. Um, uh, but they're, they're great. Um, because they're, they're only one, uh, I don't, I don't want to say you cause that's a server term, but they only take up one PCI, uh, slot and, uh, they don't draw external power. And then you get all the, you know, S, don't you get SRIOV uh, with a Quadro? So yeah, that also sounds interesting to me too. Um, so yeah, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but Neuralinks, uh, if you want to divide the GPU, there is NVIDIA vGPU, but it costs a ton and the support is limited uh, to a couple of Quadro cards. Yeah. Uh, Pinot Noir Superstar No Troll here. Ed was created by Ken Thompson at least 40 years ago, so it should be the most, <laughs> still be on most Unixes. I like it. If you think Vim is hard to exit, Ed might be more difficult. I don't know. It is pretty hard to, to exit in Vim. Uh, if you get stuck in insert mode and you don't know how to get out and then know the magic uh, commands to, to exit. Uh, but man, uh, that's awesome. I thought you were, so I learned something today. Awesome. Um, Gimli, uh, I know about the JSON file, yes, uh, but they want to get rid of that method of saving settings because it's quite hacky. Unify OS is, is the path they went now, but is more limited. I use SSH mainly for checking the status of Unify gear and don't use it for config. Um, Gimli Theon, Edge Router is way more open than SSH configs, yep. 
Newer links, yep. Heard that on new Unify Gears. Can't set BGP? BGP. I don't know what that is. I think it's BCP. BC, no, maybe not. Border Gateway Protocol. Um, useful when you're running things like MinLLB on your, yeah, on your, uh, on Kubernetes. I've seen all the mentioning of BGP in there, in the MinLLB stuff. I'm like, I don't think I need to do BGP uh, for routing. So I, I never went down that path. Um, the original script had over the LAN interface. Uh, wait, let's see. Pizza Geek. The original script had over the LAN interface uh, to change it, but I change it since Linux supports an IPMI interface internally, so it's easy to run Proxmox host. Did it that way. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Uh, Craven, you have a P2000. Nice, correct? Okay, I wasn't wrong. Whew. This, this is new stuff for me. P2000 stuff. I did a lot of reading on the last couple days. Same with AMD stuff. Um, Craven, water cool them for one slot. Oh yeah, I, 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 I should. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, take that huge, huge bracket off. Um, but then I, but then I have to modify the, um, the, I, I have to cut the bracket then in half too. And I've seen someone do it before, um, on, on servers, you know, like, uh, if they were going to do a one use server or something like that, I saw this video on this guy, like cutting it and I'm like, oh man, this is, I don't want to do like permanent damage to this stuff uh, which it was like well if i can just sell my 1050 cheap that you know maybe that's half the cost of uh p2000 and just suck it up and do it uh gimli theon oh yeah could be i never used to such features yet uh besides i managed the networks of my parents and my brother both complete unify my own network um i went with pf sense route nice uh on the consumer card okay craven uh wait on the consumer card Oh, yeah, 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 on, on water cooling, nice. Penguin Airlines, LOL, WTF is small business category on Prime Day. <laughs> There's bad stuff, finished sheets, kids, vitamin, April Fool's. <laughs> hey, if you're in the small, if you're in the, the smaller business that takes care of kids and, I don't know, um, you need fitted sheets? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, seems like it's miscategorized. Uh, Neuralinks, uh, yeah, I want to get a PF sensor, possibly building one. Nice. It's, it's going to be a huge pain in the butt uh, to redo the whole network. Yeah, I feel you. I'm getting ready to redo mine. We'll see. Uh, Mega Man, Z Team, PNY, Quadro, M6000 would be nice um, if you do lots of rendering, more VRAM, better. That's one thing, too, I noticed about the Quadros. Thank you for saying that, is that, that they have a ton of VRAM, which is nice for transcoding um, because. You know, I have one card that has like two gigs of RAM and the other has four. But when I do one 4K transcode, I mean, it's taking up 800 megs of RAM. And so uh, that's the other thing I noticed about uh, the uh, Quadro cards. They, they have a, a lot of VRAM too for transcodes. Not that I do a ton of transcodes, um, but you know, when, you know, it happens. Sometimes there's multiple going at once. Um, but yeah, it's good to know. Uh, Gimli Theon, Big Red Rusty, Holy Mercenar, and I bought a T730 for a thin client for that. They work quite well with PFSense, even have AES and I. Nice. Yeah, you have to link up this uh, T730. I haven't seen it or heard of it. Um, Tilburn, I use my P2000 for minor renders of 3D printing models. Nice. Yeah, see, I, I, need, to, I, I need to get a P2000. Um, I noticed there's like an HP branded one. Is that even worth it or does it even not matter? I've seen on eBay too, there's like an HP branded one and then one that's not branded, which I assume is just NVIDIA's. Hey, Jewel Narot, Jewel Nuro. Hey, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Um, Josh Focus, uh, I ran PFSense and Proxmox, but never really used it much. I had to configure it all for I wanted, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, um, I'm caught up, uh, which uh, is probably a good point for me to um, get caught up on some other things too. Um, I need to cut it just a little bit short tonight. I usually do two hours. I'm going to cut it short, just about 15, 20 minutes. One, because I don't know where Buddy is. Oh, he's over there laying down. He needs to go outside. Usually when he jumps, I was saying earlier, he, he jumps when he wants things. <laughs> he jumps when he wants to go outside. It's super weird. He'll jump four feet in the air like for five minutes until I bring him out. Um, so I need to do that, but also get caught up on other things. And I need to, I, I, I need to make some decisions uh, on purchasing some stuff too, before it gets too late. Um, and I got to help my wife bring something inside. She said she would be here close to nine. So anyways, long story short, I'm making excuses as why I need to go. I do hate to go, but I do got to cut it short. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in again, once again, tuning in, um, chatting it up. 
informing me on all of this technology. Uh, I love to get to talk to you guys. Um, and I love, you know, all the conversations we have. I learned so much. Yeah, headphones. I love so, uh, yeah. Like I said before, I love like hearing about what you're working on because it helps me learn about new things. It helps me, helps keep keep me fresh. Um, but um, if, if you are new here and you haven't yet, I highly encourage you to join uh, the Discord server. Uh, we have Discord server. Most of these folks are in the Discord server already. Um, some of the conversations that I was talking about happen also in Discord server. So if you ever hear me say like, yeah, you know, Penguin Airlines or Craven, I heard that earlier in Discord, that's what I'm talking about. The channel's open, welcome to all. The server's open and welcome to all. And we have all different kinds of topics. So I encourage you to, to join. Um, pretty pretty uh, awesome server, pretty, um, pretty tame too. I'm, I love it. I mean, we've got, you know, over a thousand people and it's, we've only had one incident. Uh, now that I say that we're going to have more incidents, but anyways, and it was a minor incident. It was like nothing. So anyways, long story short, that's, that's, that's not important. Uh, what is important is that like, if you think it's something for you, we would love you for you to join. Um, I will be back on Thursday, same time, seven central. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. Hopefully you guys find something awesome on, on prime day. It's not over yet. And I think it's going on tomorrow too. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's going on tomorrow too. I thought they said the 13th and the 14th. I'm hoping that a lot of the things that are either sold out or not available now, uh, they'll restock or they reserve some stuff for tomorrow. I'm hoping that's the case, or I hope they have new sales on things tomorrow. Um, that they didn't uh, pull out all the stops today and they do it tomorrow. And I also encourage you, like I said earlier, go check Newegg, go check Best Buy, go check Micro Center too, because they're kind of doing the same thing. And they're expecting some of the limited availability things on, on, on Amazon to sell out. And they know you're going to look somewhere else. And so a lot of the things on there that I've seen, those AMD processors, are elsewhere for the same, if not cheaper. So anyways, there's a little nugget for you. Hey, thanks so much. You guys have a good night and um, I will see you Thursday. Thank you so much for everything. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Be good to each other.